Okay, uh, in this video, we introduce uh, some of the applications of uh, the residue theorem. Um, in particular, we're going to look at uh, trigonometric uh, uh, integrals um, that can be evaluated using the residue theorem. Another application is the evaluation of improper integrals of real rational functions, which we're not going to consider in this video. There are many other applications of the residue theorem uh, which we shall mention in due course um, so integrals of uh, this form where f is a rational function can be evaluated by converting them into a complex contour integral al around the unit circle um, z uh, mod z equal to one Okay, so on uh, this unit circle here, mod z is equal to 1. If mod z equals to 1, then the parametric uh, uh, equation of uh, the circle is z equals to e to the i theta, where, of course, uh, theta varies between 0 and 2 pi. So what's happening here is uh, we are going to start with uh, an integral f uh, of uh, sine theta and cosine theta d theta and then we are going to end up with an integral which is a contour integral around uh, the unit circle and then here um, we're going to have uh, uh, a function let me use another symbol here say g of z dz and then um, we are going to integrate this and then so uh, be in a position to find the value of this one okay now if uh, z is equal to e to the i theta um then um one over z is going to be e to the minus i theta in fact uh, z bar is going to be the same thing now we need to write sine theta in terms of z so sine theta which is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta all over 2i this we can write as 1 over 2i into z minus 1 over z. And then cosine theta on the other hand is e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta all over 2. So this one is just going to be 1 half uh, into z plus 1 over z. Lastly, we need d theta in terms of z. So, um, if uh, z is 1, is e to the i theta, dz is going to be i e to the i theta d theta. So, this means that d theta is going to be dz over i e to the i theta. However, e to the i theta is z, so that's uh, going to be e dz over i z so these are the uh, three formulas that are going to be key in uh, making um, this conversion from integral in terms of theta to an integral in terms of z all right so let's look at a few examples of how this works out okay um we've got some three examples here um, so we're going to start with example a which is the integral of d theta on 3 plus 2 cosine theta so um, if we make the transformation here um, if we let z equals to e to the i theta um, then what's going to happen is uh, well this we can convert into a contour integral d theta is going to be dz over iz as we've seen 
then the denominator is going to be 3 plus 2 times 1 half z plus 1 over z so 1 half into z plus 1 over z um, so this is going to be the integral of uh, dz over iz this is going to be 3 plus z plus 1 over z um, now what we're going to do is uh, if we take the 1 over z outside it's going to be negative z and then in the denominator multiply through by the z so we're going to have z squared plus 3z plus 1 now um, according to the residue theorem the value of this thing is simply going to be 2 pi i times the residue of this function at a singular point that lies inside the unit circle so the um, the thing we want to do is to find the singularities of this function so they're going to happen when the denominator is equal to zero by the quadratic formula this is going to be when minus z is minus the plus or minus uh, that's going to be 9 minus 4 there b squared is 9 minus 4 all over 2 it's going to be negative 3 plus or minus square root 5 all over 2 now there are two of them out of the two only minus 3 plus root 5 over 2 is going to be uh, lying inside, located inside the unit circle. Um, so that means we need the residue of our function. Mm, our f of z is simply 1 over z squared plus 3z plus 1 so the residue z is minus 3 plus root 5 over 2 is going to be so we just need to differentiate the denominator here and then plug in this value so it's going to be 1 over 2z plus 3 then we need to plug in z is negative 3 plus root 5 all over 2 um, so when we do this uh, this is going to be 2 into negative 3 plus root 5 over 2 plus 3 now um, so this is going to be minus 3 plus root 5 plus 3 so it's going to be 1 over root 5 so that's going to be the, res the residue which means now we can find the value of our integral i call this i uh, just to make sure we don't forget that negative t uh, i so the value of i is going to be 2 pi i this is from the residue theorem then the negative i um, from our integral and then now the residue so this is going to give us uh, 2 pi over root 5 um, of course a um, um, a guideline for this type of integrals is that uh, um, this is a real integral so the final answer must be a real number otherwise uh, it will imply that something wrong has uh, happened so that's how a works out we go to part b so in part b we've got the integral from minus pi to pi of d theta over 5 minus 4 sine theta so again if we convert this into a contour integral 
d theta becomes dz over iz. The denominator becomes 5 minus 4 into 1 over 2iz minus 1 over z. Um, so, this is going to be equal to dz all over iz. 5 minus... Um, is going to be 2 over i, z minus 1 over z. Okay, then we're going to multiply through by i, z in that denominator. So this is going to be dz, 5 i, z. Um, minus... Um, 2z into z minus 1 over z if we just do that in stages and then finally um, this is going to be dz uh, over 5iz minus 2z squared plus 2 so that is going to be the final expression of the denominator and then again if we look for the singularities um, so the singularities are going to happen when the denominator is equal to zero so by the quadratic formula this is going to give us um, um, the following numbers this is going to be two times negative two um, Minus 25 plus 16 is uh, actually uh, minus 9. So this is going to be square root negative 9 over negative 4. Square root negative 9 is uh, 3i. So this is either going to be negative 8i over negative 4. Oh, negative 8i, uh, not negative 8i this time, 3 minus 5, negative 2i over negative 4. So we either have 2i or i over 2. And then, of course, only this one lies inside the unit circle. So we need to work out the residue of our function at z equals to i on 2. So if we just differentiate the denominator, uh, this one here, going to be 5i minus 4z. Um, so here, 5i minus 4z, we plug in z equals to i on 2. So this is going to be 1 over 5i minus 4 into i on 2 it's going to be 5i minus 2i it's going to be 3i um, and so the value of the integral so the value of the integral it's going to be 2 pi i times the residue um, so 2 pi i the residue is 1 over 3i. So this is going to be 2 thirds pi is the value of the integral. Okay, um, at this point we're going to give you a chance to have a go at C. You can just pause the video, work through C. Then when you um, press, uh, when you continue with the video, then you can compare with our solution. All right, uh, we're now about to scroll down to our solution for part C. Uh, before we do so, we'd like to thank you for visiting our channel and watching uh, these videos. We hope that the material is helpful to you. We do impl employ you, of course, to subscribe to our channel and uh, support us so that we can make more videos like this one. If you've got any questions or comments, we will be happy to hear from you. Just post them in the comment section below. 
So for part C, uh, this is the, the integral we have. Uh, so if we make the transformation, that is what uh, d theta becomes, and uh, that's what sine theta becomes. Um, then if we multiply the both numerator and denominator by 2 here, uh, that's what we have, and then multiply everything by iz, uh, remove brackets, so that's our denominator. This is going to be 0 whenever uh, z is minus 3 or minus i on 3. Only this one lies inside the unit circle. So work out the residue at that point, and it works out to 1 over 4i. And so this integral is to pi i times 1 over 4i, which is pi on 2. All right, thank you.